Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video as we've taken a look at the Giant Man Builder figure wave one by one and now it means it's time to look at the Builder figure itself. But before we tuck into him, let's rank the wave. Bottom of the heap, sorry Steve, or more appropriately Chris, it's movie Captain America. Not a bad action figure in itself really, it's just that I essentially already own two versions of this action figure, so it just doesn't seem essential and buying it felt like paying a ransom to get the builder figure part he comes with. Then Red Guardian, which is largely a reuse and redeco of the Captain America from the previous Red Onslaught wave, and I don't begrudge the reuse as it's logical, but Hasbro, you had one job to do, redeco it, or you messed that up. Just lots of little paint sloppiness going on here that prevents me from enjoying it as much as I want to. Followed by Nick Fury, and I was all about a classic comic Nick Fury until I got him, then I was like, hmm. Now admittedly the two interchangeable heads he comes with do increase the play and display value, yet the head I really wanted them to nail, this Nick Fury one, is the one I end up liking least. Then in bronze medal position it's Iron Man Mark 46, yeah, Tony or Robert, you can turn that frown around as when it comes to being my favourite Iron Man movie action figure, you get the gold medal. The silver medalist of the wave is Nuke because he looks like Chip Hazard from Small Soldiers with the American flag tattooed to his face and half his skin ripped away to reveal him to be a cyborg. Nuff said. Finally, top of the heap in gold medal position, or perhaps I should fabricate a special vibranium medal because it's none other than the King of Wakanda. He's also King of This Wave making me so excited for Captain America's Civil War that I may just pee myself. And I just did. So that's my opinion, now you guys let me know how you rank them in the comments below, and now it's back to business with the Giant Man Builder figure. So Jess Horton 100 is not the only person to ask this, and yes, I think it's safe to assume that. Now as far as I'm aware, Scott Lang, the second Ant-Man in the comics, has never become Giant Man. In fact, the comics Giant Man is an alias the first Ant-Man Hank Pym has gone by a number of times. Yet from this Builder figure, I think it's safe to assume the movie Ant-Man Scott Lang will become Giant Man in Captain America Civil War. Further backed up by Giant Man's inclusion in the superhero airport battle Lego set, and also by a supersized pop bobblehead by Funko. Yes, Succopus, it is possible. You'll have to stay tuned for the comparison to the Toy Biz Giant Man buff though, but for now, here he is flanked on the left by the Marvel Legends Ant-Man and on the right by the Marvel Select version. So I will say across them, the spirit of the costume is the same, yet the actual design is different with Giant Man. It actually looks different between the Legends and Select versions of Ant-Man, but I can assure you the difference there is not in the design, but in the lack of deco on the Legends version. For a full comparison between those two, to, you can go check out that video. Significantly different from Ant-Man to Giant-Man are the belt, the gauntlets, the helmet, and boy does Giant-Man have some crazy tongues to his footwear. Taking a closer look and the detail is certainly there in the sculpt with varying surface textures from the smoothness of the black parts to the differing patterns of the red and grey parts. However, as with his smaller Legends Ant-Man counterpart, I'd imagine the sculpted detail isn't matched by an equally detailed deco. Once seen on screen, I'm sure we'll find out there's detail here in the costume that is without paint application. But at least in the sculpt here, the cost cutting of reusing parts in a number of figures from the wave it itself is paying off, giving us a new sculpt that's pretty much a one-shot. I mean, it's not like this bath can be reused for any other character, although down the pipeline it could be shrank to six inches for a normal sized Ant-Man version. Not to mention, I can't imagine we'll be without a Marvel Legends Civil War Spider-Man, right? The helmet has received a paint wash which gives it a fill-tested worn look. And in design, compared to the Ant-Man helmet, it feels like the kind of antennae parts are becoming much more prominent with this giant man design. And I do really appreciate the translucence of the plastic of the helmet's lenses so you can see his eyes behind them. Hasbro could have easily have copped out and just slapped some metallic red paint on there to convey the lens, so it's nice to see them go to this level. 
Ironically, small guy 68 asks, how tall is Giant Man? Well, let me break out the tape measure to be precise, and he measures 10 inches tall. Not a bad size, I mean, for Hasbro, a company that did put out Rocket Raccoon and Puck builder figures. Yet, yeah, still in the shade of Toy Biz's Giant Man builder figure from back in 2006, and in the shade not just because of the comic Giant Man Baff's towering height, but because it's my all-time favourite Baff, and this new movie Giant Man Baff hasn't changed that. That's not to say I don't like this new Giant Man Baff, it speaks more about how much I like this old Toy Biz one. And really, with the changing economic climate, it's not really fair to compare two action figures released a decade apart, it's just not a level plan. Field. But when it comes to Giant Man, size does matter. That's the point of the character. I'd like my Giant Man to be as giant as possible. But at least the Baff is bigger than the Giant Man we got with the Ant-Man Marvel Legends. And really, until we see Captain America Civil War, we just don't know how giant Giant Man becomes. For all we know, the scale of the Baff here could be the sum of it. And side by side like this with the movie Hulkbuster Baff, and the two just seem to have a synergy of scale that would make them look correct in a display together. Now looking at articulation, his head rotates side to side, and as Giant Man he's used to looking down at people, so his head hinges down this far, and then he's able to look up this much. At the shoulder his arm rotates, and this hinges up to about a right angle to his body, his upper arm rotation, followed by a double jointed elbow, then at the wrist his hands rotate, and they're also hinged, moving down, and also up. He has waist rotation and then also an ab crunch which moves this far forward and then it also moves, well it doesn't really move very far back. At the hips his legs move out really quite far and then they move a decent amount forward and well very slightly back there's upper leg rotation followed by a double jointed knee then at the ankle his feet are hinged moving backwards and forwards and then he has that ankle rocker pivot that I love. And taking advantage of that ankle pivot with this being his widest stance possible, still with both feet flat on the floor. Not bad for a big guy, huh? And so with the giant man bath between the movie Iron Man and Cap from this wave, and all things considered, I like this giant man bath yet. I don't love it. Now to my mind, movie action figures live or die by the movie they're connected to. So if after seeing Captain America Civil War, Scott Lang becoming Giant Man is an awesome scene-stealing exercise of his power, I may just love this bath a little more. Frankly, I still can't quite believe though he'll become Giant Man in Civil War. It's just the movie already has pretty much every Avenger in it, plus Black Panther and Spider-Man. Does it need Giant Man too? I mean, it could have been safe for the Ant-Man sequel as I'm not sure what about that movie will make me put my bum on a seat. Anyway, for more of Toy Biz's Giant Man Builder Figure, click the video on the left to see him in an action figure comparison with the Marvel Universe Gigantic Battles Goliath. Alternatively, if you missed any of the reviews from this Giant Man Bath Wave, click the video on the right for a one-stop shop playlist featuring them all, including the Civil War trailer being given the Glenn Webb treatment by my good friend Rob Pollock. Phew, I don't mind admitting it, I'm a bit pooped from pumping out all those reviews, so I sure would love it if you could reward this video by taking a quick second to hit that thumbs up button. And I hope to see you all next time. Mm, bye.